So, you have returned from exile. Kavar thought you might, if only to wander your old battlegrounds. But I did not think you would come to Nar Shaddaa. Still, you were always a difficult one to read, both when you were tied to the Force, and even more when it was lost to you. I do not know. It was a sense he had, and he had served in war as you had. Perhaps he thought he understood you, or maybe he simply hoped he did. He felt you were the key to understanding the threat we face. The others were not so certain, but so many of them are gone now, as you no doubt know. Uh, he sensed some connection between you and many of the worlds touched by war. He thought by traveling to such places, he could achieve understanding. No doubt. I think the answers will provide us both with some measure of peace. I have kept secrets for far too long. They have scattered, but there is purpose in their movements. It is both to hunt and draw out our enemies. Somehow, they, we, are being targeted through the Force, and when Jedi gather, we are vulnerable. So we have chosen places where it is difficult to sense others through the Force, whether on planets dense with life, or touched by war. In such places, we may conceal ourselves, gather information without presenting ourselves as targets. It was part of Kavar's plan. Yes, he felt if our enemy cannot detect us, then perhaps they would believe themselves victorious and show themselves. And we knew that the war would be lost if we continued to act as we had. I do not know where they wander now. There are few of us though, too few and I have not heard from them in some time. Vrook still lives? I had not felt his presence for some time. What I can tell you... It is a long story, but there is no harm in you knowing, and someone should know. Only a handful of us remained after the Jedi Civil War, barely a hundred in number. Then, even that hundred began to vanish in places where the Force seemed blind. The only pattern we determined is that when Jedi gathered, they were seen no more. At the last Jedi Conclave on the Miraluka world of Qatar, the entire planet was wiped out, an entire race destroyed, because the Jedi chose to gather there. It was only then that we realized we were facing something far more powerful than we knew how to fight. We could not allow the fact that when we gathered, we placed everything around us at risk. A Jedi's life is sacrifice, but we could not allow our presence or actions to endanger others. And we could not fight an enemy that will not reveal itself. But any Jedi, anyone who was strong in the Force, who attempted to track down such a threat, vanished without a trace. It does, but you must step back to see it. Whatever this threat was, it was targeting us and everything around us. Yet it was somehow weak enough that it was afraid to confront us openly. If it believed us defeated, then perhaps it would finally show itself. It was a faint hope, but it was the best we had. It was Kavar's plan. He was always the greatest tactician among us, and had seen war more than the rest of us. Very well. We told you it was because you followed Revan to war, but you ask because you are not certain of that answer, nor were we. The day we cast you out, that is the moment I decided to leave the Order, because I do not believe we truly faced the reasons you were exiled, and if we do not examine such truths, then we are already lost. I think it was because we were afraid. It is a difficult thing to live one's life with the Force. To see a vision of what it would be like to be severed from it, it is more frightening than you know. Very well. I had thought perhaps that here upon the Smuggler's Moon, I might find some evidence of the threat we faced. The bounties on Jedi and their disappearance I did not believe the two were connected, but there was a chance. 
And the strong currents of life here in Nar Shaddaa make perceiving a force user difficult. I could use it to cloak my movements and watch without being discovered. Very well. Is that what you think? We did no such thing. But it is a technique that has been used as punishment in the past, yes. It is a rare sentence, and to my knowledge it has only been done once, at a moment where a Jedi discipline has failed. What caused your loss, I fear, was different. I am not certain I understand it. We did not understand it fully then, and only recently do I feel we may have become enlightened. The other masters may have more knowledge of this, but I do not. And I do not know if they even live. Does it matter? It seems your power has returned. Perhaps the loss was not a loss at all. Very well. Ah, so the records of your trial were found. Good. Sometimes I think this galaxy would be a better place if there were less Jedi secrets. But I have no answer for you, as much as I would like to give one. We vowed never to speak of it, and although I would not keep promises to Jedi, I keep promises I make to others. And Kavar was a friend. If we were gathered as one, then the promise might be revoked. Until then, I can say nothing. Very well. Yes, such bonds are a connection that can be formed at moments of crisis, or in the slow understanding that grows between master and apprentice. It is most common between two beings who are sensitive to the Force. It allows the transmission of feelings, of influence. It was something you were gifted with, as I recall, before your fall. You form such attachments easier than most, even to those who could feel the Force only faintly. Even Vrook could not ignore it, which is saying something. I do not know. A bond between two living beings is not something easily broken. It is not a choice. It is like breaking a feeling, like turning away from the Force. To break a bond, your feelings would have to change, or one of you would have to die. But even then, the bond wouldn't go away. It would simply... it would simply be empty. A wound. One of you would have to die, but even then, the bond wouldn't go away. It would simply, it would simply be empty, a wound. Now, now I must take up the role I was ready to cast aside. This threat has finally revealed itself, and we Jedi will need to stand together. I did not speak fully of what I have felt. Staying on Nar Shaddaa, it is an exile of sorts, one that I have chosen. I, too, lost a Padawan on Malachor, not to the battle, but to the alternative, to the teachings that Revan brought from the unknown regions. And I was not the only Jedi Master to watch a student turn on them. No, no, they were not to blame, but many of the Order did so. It was a difficult time, a time of strong emotion. Perhaps the Council, perhaps the Order itself, had grown arrogant in their teachings. It is easy to cast blame, but it is perhaps time the Order accepted responsibility for their teachings and their arrogance and come to recognize that perhaps we are flawed. Not once did I hear one of the Council claim responsibility for Revan, for Exar Kun, for Ulik, for Malak, or for you. Yet, you were the only one who came back from the wars to face our judgment. And rather than attempting to understand why you did what you did, we punished you instead. Our one chance to see where we had gone wrong, and we cast it aside. And now, that decision has come back to us and may carry with it our destruction. Perhaps there is something wrong in us, in our teachings, and though I tried, I could not cause that thought to leave me, so I left the Council. And I was not the only one. That is why many scattered, and why many in the Republic do not trust us, and why we do not trust ourselves. Make no mistake, I am no Jedi. This is the end, you see. After this, there will be nothing.
and I think it will be for the best. Do you wish to do battle now? I have nothing more to say. It provides no comfort at all, for reasons in which I still must keep secret. Suffice to say, redemption was not Revan's choice, and I have never believed those of the Council who attempt to console themselves otherwise for the crime they committed. But we have spoken enough, I think, and words I think dull us both. Let us speak through the Force, through sparring. This form you may have already seen much of during the Mandalorian Wars, but it is fitting to speak using elements of the past, I think. Ataru is the name given to the movements of this form. Though it is aggressive, it is focused, and its best use is in combat against a single opponent. This form is somewhat less useful in deflecting blaster shots. Use it when dealing with opponents in close combat, not against a battalion firing heavy blasters at you. Perhaps exile has been good to you indeed. It has certainly not dulled your instincts, nor the speed at which you learn. I shall go to Dantooine, to the ruins of the Enclave. If you gather the others, I will meet you there. And thank you, exile. You are returning. It is good that you are back among us. Why are you here? Because I told her. Told her everything. Ah, and now you are free? Yeah, so no more threats, no more of your requests. You and me, we're done. Did you ever think I truly held you? You're more of a fool than I thought. What truly held you was you, and let me show you why. I once held the galaxy by the throat, as you once held her by the throat and let her die slowly and your emotion at that point is what you fear i can unlock that part of you anytime i wish it is a simple thing the human mind once it feels something strongly it becomes etched in the memory the subconscious shall i show you that part of you that hungered to kill jedi that took pleasure from it 
Or perhaps you will continue to listen to my counsel, and I shall ignore your pathetic attempts at freedom. Now leave me, murderer. I have nothing further to say to one such as you.